and reading at verse 8. When thou steadest, seek my face. My heart said unto thee, Thy faith, Lord, I will seek. Verse 9, hide not thy faith far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger, for thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. This psalm was written by David. And here in verse 8, David is responding to God's appeal that he should seek his face. And in response, David said, Your faith, Lord, I'm going to seek. He's responding to God, Your faith, Lord, I am going to seek. David's response has deep and profound meaning because David desired to look at God's face, to gaze, number one, on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in verse 4 of the same chapter. Number two, to see the goodness of God in the land of the living, verse 13. And I have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. as we look around in spite of all the cracks and the ailment of our society, we can still see the goodness of God. It is said that ancient philosophers have long attested that beauty, truth, and goodness form the foundational base of human life. They are essential qualities for our existence. You see, David could not imagine life without God. So he asked God, do not hide your face from me. David realized his critical need Note at the beginning of the psalm, David prayed a prayer in Psalm 27, 1, says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is this stronghold of my life. I like that translation. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You know, the patriarch David words lead us to a very important question. What is so significant in David speaking the face of God. When God asked him, David wanted to see the beauty of God's character and the truth about his goodness. Let us 
examine the meaning of the face of God. I discovered that the Hebrew term panim is always plural and it has two meanings in the context of this passage. It means face and presence. Which explain why the translators render the same biblical text differently. Some speak about God and others translate it more literally as God's face. In the Hebrew Bible, the word appeared 2,140 times. And in the Greek word, occurring 76 times in the New Testament, it had the same basic meaning, face and presence. You see, in the creation of Adam, contains implied imagining of God's face, which suggests that the first thing that Adam saw when he opened his eyes was the face of God. Because Adam was made in the image of God. And so the moment he opened his eyes, he saw the faith of God. Adam was in the presence of God, in a close relationship with a divine person. Adam's existence began by seeing the face of God. It was a face-to-face -face encounter. I want you to know that. A warmness of the imagery that alludes to a loving relationship between them. How do I know that? According to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8, it says, And Adam and Eve heard the voice of God in Genesis 3, 8, walking in the garden, in the what? cool of the day and Adam and his wife as soon as they sinned they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord they couldn't face God because of sin what a tragedy they had the opportunity of sitting with him, talking with him, looking at God face to face. Then in Exodus 33 and verse 11, listen to what this text says. And it is indeed a found. And the Lord God spake unto Moses face to face. As a man speaketh unto his friend. I read that again. And the Lord speak to Moses face to face. Talking to him, sit down. He looked him in the eye. Face to face as a man speak it to his friend. What, a, what an opportunity, what a privilege. No wonder when Moses went up into the, into the mountain and he talked with God, when he came back down, the people said to him, look here, Moses, we cannot face you. Why we cannot face you is because you are glowing so much, basking in the presence of the Almighty, that you will blind us. But you know, sin broke that relationship when Adam and Eve sinned. 
very sad. We lost that communication with God when he used to come down in the cool of the day and explain to God. In the priestly Arianic blessing, God's face is mentioned twice. Listen to what it says in Numbers 6, 24 to 26. It says, the Lord bless you. The Lord and keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Twice. God's face is mentioned. So whenever you leave the sanctuary and you go out into the world for the week, what the preacher is saying and what the pastor is saying is that the Lord make his face to shine upon you when you go out there. We want you to glow and to bask in the presence of the Almighty. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you because we want you to be continually in the presence of God. Remember we said that Hebrew word, the term refers to face and it refers to presence. In the presence of God. God shining and turning his face toward his people expresses joy and it shows acceptance, it shows favor, it shows respect and forgiveness. Many psalms share the same thought. In Psalm 4 and verse 6, many say, Who will show us any good? Yahweh, let the light of your face shine upon us. Psalm 4 and verse 6. Let the light of your face shine on us. In the New Living Translation, the verse read, Let your face smile on us, Lord. You see, we need this smile of God because God's smile enables us to smile on each other. David could not imagine life without this favor. In 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 14, uh, the wise man Solomon wrote, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Your faith, Lord, I will seek. You know, to seek God's faith means to search for his favor. Asking him to grant you his favor. You know what it is to have the favor of God? The blessing of the Almighty. Jacob and Esau and the faith of God. Look at this story. The story of Jacob wrestling with a stranger and meeting with his brother Esau is very illuminating because the whole narrative of Genesis 32 and 33 is composed around a key word, faith. The Hebrew text literally states that Jacob was 
flee, fleeing from the face of his brother. Esau just this face means a person here. The image of Esau haunted Jacob for 20 years. And during this time, he never visited his native land nor his parents or reconciled with Esau. He could not face his brother because of what he did. But before Jacob could meet with his brother, he needed to meet with God. Before he saw the face of his brother, again, he had to see the face of God. Jacob, the extravagant gift that he brought for Esau, uh, were to appease and pacify his brother so that he could not see and remember the wrong that he did to him. Thus, when he met the man Christ, the pre-incarnated Christ, a change came over. Jacob. And that is why he called a place where he wrestled that morning and when the angel said who was the Christ said I got to leave you now because the day break it Jacob said I will not let you go until you bless me and so Jacob called the place Peniel, which means the faith of God. In Hebrew reason, it is because right there at that place where he wrestled that night, he saw God face to face. And his life was pierced. He saw God face to face. What a change. And he never forgot that experience because the Christ touched him in the side and left him with a limb. You see, my friend, just the touch of God, a, a, a slight touch from God there had to be a change. And it affected him for life. And it allowed him to remember that that place at Peniel, he met God. He saw the face of God. What did Jacob read in the face of God? You know, at that place, God gave him a new name. He said, you, you are no more going to be called Jacob, but Israel. And he blessed him. In spite of all the wrong that he did, he blessed him. And later that morning, Jacob confessed that he sees God face to face in his brother. Esau. What did Jacob read in the face of his brother? The same expression of love, compassion, forgiveness, and grace. His brother accepted the gift that he brought. His brother told him, he said, no, I don't want it. He said, my brother, the Lord has dealt good with me. I have enough. I have more than enough. Take it. Yes, because he saw the face of God. God smiled on Jacob. It reflected in his acceptance 
of its returning brother. What do people read in our faces when they interact? What your husband see in your face this morning? What your relatives see in your face when they interact? I want to share with you five reasons uh, that we see in the, the faith of God. Number one, the faith of God gives the assurance of his presence. It gives the assurance of his presence. According to Genesis 28, 15, and behold, I am with thee, and I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and I will bring thee again to this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. It's an assurance. And in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, it says, And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. When we see God's face, we see God's presence, we know that he's going to continue to be with us in spite of all that is happening in our world. You know, when I learned of the tragedy that happened this week, I just, I said, how could God allow that to happen? But then we have to reach to the place where, in spite of all that happened, that sometimes it it is to the very core. This pandemic has ravished our churches. People who have been our friends journeyed with, they are no longer here. The pandemic has taken them out. And we wonder why did God allow that? We are here today, and many of you are listening in. Why are you here still? I'm not dead. Yes, the Lord somehow preserve you, and if He had preserved you. Make sure that whatever you have left, you will give it in service for the benefit of humanity to get them in the kingdom. The second reason for the faith of God, the faith of God leads and guides. The faith of God leads and guides. Exodus 33, 15, and he said unto them, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. If you are not going with me, God, I'm not going to go. Say blessed. I want you to go with me every step of the way. I can't change. If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up inch.
get the face of God leads and guides. That is why some places I don't go. Because I know I cannot have the Savior with me. For he can't watch over me. So wherever I go, I have to take the name of Jesus with me. Child of sorrow and of woe. Number three, the face of God brings endurance and perseverance. Revelation 14, 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You know, sometimes you look around and you see people who were once in the faith, they have left the church. You know, I had a call only last week. Somebody called me and said, Pastor, I want you to, I want to share with you. I was, I was dedicated as a baby in the Dunamis church some years ago, but I wanted to experience the world, so I went out there and I, uh, I spent some time. Um, but uh, as I visited other churches of other faith, I just could not process what they were saying because what they were saying was contrary to what the Bible teaches. I said, oh. And she said, they tried to say, oh, you are a demon. And so, the more you get to understand the world and because of what you were exposed to, you recognize that you got to hold on to the faith that is proclaimed in the Bible. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep. Here don't hold it and let it go. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus through the thick and the thin. That is why I had to commend a lot of you who are here, that in spite of the pandemic, you are holding on. You're keeping the light burning in this part of the vineyard. You are, you are committed to the faith, committed to the church. You keep it going. Yes. Number four, the faith of God means that he watches over us, speaks to us, and hears our prayers. Psalm 32 and verse 8, I will instruct thee and I will teach thee in the way which thou shalt go, and I will guide thee with mine eyes. Oh. Yes. And he hears our prayer. You know, prayer is a great privilege. It is a privilege when you when you come to church and the whoever is up here giving the pastoral prayer, they said, I want you now to pray. And immediately you are ushered in to the throne room of glory. It's a privilege. And we did not ask to pray. It is a divine mandate, God says. Men ought always to pray. Talk to me. So that my divine presence can be with you. Yes, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way. You see, when you 
have the faith of God with you, you can't go wrong. That is why the text said clearly that David could not view life without God. He said, hide not thy face from me. I want to see you at all times, God. In spite of, we studied this morning in the, about David's great sin. But in spite of his sin, he didn't get himself laughed and bugged down. He cried out and said, have mercy upon me, O oh God. Forgive me for my iniquity. Lord, I confess to you, give me another chance. That was David's prayer. He knew he did wrong, but he came to God and begged forgiveness. You can't, you can't survive without the mercy of the Almighty. You can't. You got to seek his face. Your faith, Lord, I will seek. Yes. Number five, seeking the faith of God transforms our lives. Seeking the faith of God changes us. If any man be in Christ, He's the new creature. Yes. Second Corinthians 3.18 But we all with open faith beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord and are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. What an opportunity to be changed. You are no longer what you used to be because of the grace and mercy of God. One of these days, the redeemed and the inhabitants of the New Jerusalem will delight in seeing God's face. That face-to-face -face contact that was broken, we in the New Jerusalem will see God face-to-face. -face. And we will behold his countenance. And this face-to-face -face encounter will be the highest and ultimate experience. We will go back to that place when God come down in the cool of the day and was there. But he will never leave us. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 22. And the reading verse 3 and 4. Revelation 22, 3 and 4. And they shall be no more cursed. Getting rid of sin now. And there will be no more curse. That curse that was put on the world and on man and on woman will be gone. The curse of pain, the curse of sickness, the curse of death, sorrow. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. And I like this part of the verse. And they shall see his face. You hear what the text says? 
and they shall see his faith. So when I go up to the New Jerusalem and I sit down on that Sabbath, I will see the face of God. I will see his face. Face to face shall I behold him. Face to face shall see and know. And with rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ, who died for me. That's what the Bible says. I will see his face. Lord, your faith, Lord, I will seek. We are not seeking the face of God. Now we are seeing the faith of God. And his name shall be in their forehead. The master's name will be in my forehead. What, what an opportunity. I can't miss out on that. And because I will see his faith, I will be thrilled to serve and obey him and to worship him throughout eternity. And throughout eternity, he's going to be permanently with us. And from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, Shall all flesh, shall all flesh come together to worship him and we will see his face. And we shall be like him because we shall behold him. Oh, I long for that day to come. Because truly the hymn writer, his word will become a reality. Brother Elia, face to face shall I, not we, I behold him. You will be holy. Me, every one of us will be holy. So get to see his face now. Seek him now. Your face, Lord, I will seek. And God had taken the initiative to seek us. And he's begging us to come. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me. Seek my face now. And permanently you will bask in the sunshine of his glory. And you will be like him, and you will look like him. And we will live and reign throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. What a joy. What a privilege. What a rewarding experience. I thank him for that. I invite you to bow your head for the prayer. Lord, David responded to your request to seek your faith by saying, Lord, your face I will seek because he knew that he could not exist apart from you. And so we today re recognize that we are nothing apart from you. Our whole life is wrapped up in you. We want to bathe in the sunshine of your glory. We want to see your face. We want to behold you. So by beholding you, we become changed. We want that experience. 
We want to look like you. Oh God, today we ask that you will rid us of that cloud that separates us from you. And one of the days, certain things that we need an answer for, we will be able to sit down with you and you will give us the answer as we look upon your countenance and bask in the sunshine of your glory and live and reign throughout eternity. May we never lose that wonderful experience that is awaiting us. For we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, our loving Savior. Amen. Thank you. Amen, brethren. What a grand and awesome time that will be when we can join together to see the face of Jesus. For we would have known that although sin tried to separate us from the love of Christ, we, by seeking God's face, will remain ever constant in his presence. Please join with me now as we sing hymn number 520 for the closing hymn. Please stand.
Amen. Let us pray. Our loving and gracious Father, which art in heaven, Lord, we are so thankful to you for the opportunity to call you our Father and our friend. Today, we have experienced you in such a special way, and we were reminded that we should stay close to you and to seek your face. May we ever remain constant in doing so, so that in our struggles, we will seek your face. In our doubts and in our fears, we will seek your face. When fire strikes in our home and we are despondent, we will continue to seek your face. Whatever the circumstances, Lord, help us to remain faithful through the power of your Holy Spirit to continue to seek your face. Father, we thank you that we have gathered here to worship you. But as we separate from each other now, may you go with us, dear Jesus. Hold us in your precious hands. Guide us in our walking, in our living, in our talking. And help us this week to remember to seek you more than we have ever sought you before. Forgive us for where we have transgressed through the hours of this holy Sabbath hour. But take us now in your loving arms, under your protective care, O oh God. I thank you. And I praise you for answering our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>